Welcome to German history with a German accent. My name is still Wolf, W-O-L-F, just like the animal. And in today's video, I'm speaking about Theodor Eike. As always, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button and drop me a comment below. Theodor Eike was born on October 17th, 1892 in Hampon, which is now part of France, as youngest of 11 children. Eike left school without graduating and joined the Bavarian army in the year 1909 as a two-year volunteer in the 23rd Infantry Regiment. He remained in the army and filled an administrative position as an assistant paymaster in the military. Up on the outbreak of the First World War, Eike served on the Western Theater. He participated in the battles of Ypres in the year 1914 and the following year. Eike also participated in the Battle of Verdun, the year 1916, as a member of the 2nd Bavarian Artillery Regiment on foot. He was decorated with the Iron Cross 2nd Class for his efforts during the First World War. Theodor Eike married Bertha Schwebel of Ilmenau in December 1914, when his commanding officer approved special leave for him. Two children, a girl and a boy, came out of this marriage. After the war had ended, Eike resigned from his position and attended technical college in Ilmenau, but had to abandon his studies since he didn't meet the minimum requirements as well as a lack of financial funds. Theodor Eike then pursued a career with the police, but was ultimately fired from his police job in the year 1923. He would later state that he was fired since he displayed open hatred for the Weimar Republic. But since he didn't join the NSDAP and the SA until the year 1928 and the SS until 1930, it can be doubted that this was the real and only reason for what he was fired for. I could then obtain employment at IG Farben, which was a chemical and pharmaceutical conglomerate consisting out of the companies BASF, Bayer, Höchst, AGFA, the Chemische Fabrik Griesheim Elektron, and Weiler Termeer as a security officer. He was fired in 1932 after he had planned bomb attacks against political enemies of the Nazis. Eike was then sentenced to two years in prison, but with the help of Bavarian Minister of Justice Franz Günther, whom sympathized with the National Socialists. Theodor Eike could escape to Italy under the orders of Heinrich Himmler. When he returned to Germany, he threatened to use some leftover bombs not only against communists, but also against traitors in the own party. This threat led to his arrest. And after he went on a hunger strike, Eike was sent into a mental asylum. Heinrich Himmler reacted to it by stripping Theodor Eike from his SS rank. He, however, reinstated him and arranged his release after he had learned that Theodor Eike was not mentally unstable. After his release, Theodor Eike was appointed the commander of the concentration camp Dachau in June 1933, and he would then develop new systems for the concentration camps and become inspector of concentration camps in the following year. The SS units, whom would guard concentration camps, named as Totenkopfverbände, or death head units. Under his reign, terror, torture, and murder continued, as well as forced labor was introduced. During the Night of the Long Knives, where Ernst Dröhm and other high-ranking SA members were arrested and murdered, it was Theodor Eike, whom first gave Ernst Dröhm the chance to commit suicide. And after the SA leader, SA leader refused, Eike shot him to death together with his adjutant, Michael Lippert. Since the year 1936, Theodor Eike was holding the title of Führer der SS Totenkopfverbände, leader of the SS Deadhead Units. Besides guarding the concentration camps, the Deadhead Units were also trained in military combat. When the Wehrmacht invaded Poland and started the Second World War, SS deadhead units operated in the occupied territories where they participated in shooting prisoners, looting, and other war crimes. By October 1939, 
Theodor Eike was given the task to organize the Deadhead units into a full-on SS division. The SS Deadhead division participated in the West Campaign when the German troops pushed the Allies towards Dunkirk. Members of the SS Deadhead divisions committed the Le Paradise Massacre where about a hundred British prisoners of war were murdered. The SS Dead Division remained in France after the campaign was completed successfully. In June of 1941, Theodor Eicher participated in Operation Barbarossa with his SS Deadhead Division as part of Army Group North. In July, Eicher was wounded while driving over a landmine and while on sick leave, he took part in a conference where the murder of Soviet commissars under the commissar order was planned and he inspected another concentration camp while they practiced a new way of executing prisoners. Once Theodor Eicher returned to the front lines in the fall of 1941, the German offense was stopped and the Deadhead Division was encircled by the Red Army in Damask in February of 1942. Although the Deadhead Division was not destroyed during the encirclement, a supply corridor was established in April 42, the division suffered severe losses. When Theodor Eicher received his oak leaves to the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross on April 20th by Adolf Hitler himself, the initial Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross he earned in December 1941, he was assured that his unit would be transferred to France where it would be replenished. Eicher's Deadhead Division was transferred to France in October of 1942, where it was renamed into SS Panzergrenadier Division Totenkopf. After the, the division received its new equipment, especially the tanks, the unit was transferred back to the Eastern Theater after it participated in the occupation of the French territory that had not yet been occupied during the West Campaign of 1940. In early 1943, while the Deadhead Division participated in the offense in the Southern Soviet Union, Theodor Eicher's Fiesler Storch was shot down by a Soviet anti-aircraft gun on February 26, 1943, south of Kharkov. The SS Obergruppenführer died at the age of 50. Thank you so much for watching.